standing as you're able for the reading for the Holy Gospel. This morning gospel lesson comes to us from Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through 30. Jesus speaks of the coming of judgment. Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Sovereign, will those who are saved be few? And Jesus said to them, Strive to enter by the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the householder has risen up and shut the door, you will begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Sovereign, open to us. You will be answered, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But you will be told, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There you will weep and gnash your teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the realm of God. And some are last will be first and some who are first will be last. May God add understanding to the reading of this gospel. Join me in singing Gloria. Glory be to the Maker and to the Christ and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the This word for striving is the word from which the English word agony is derived. The struggle to enter must be so intense that it can be described as an agony of the soul and the spirit. We run a certain danger. It is easy to think that once we have made a commitment of ourselves to Jesus Christ, we have reached the end of the road and can, as it were, sit back as if we had achieved our goal. There's no such finality in the Christian life, though. A person must ever be going forward, or necessarily that person will be going backward. The Christian way is to climb up a mountain pathway towards a peak, which will never be reached in this world. It was said of two gallant climbers who died on Mount Everest. When last seen, they were going strong to the top. It was inscribed on the grave of the Alpine guide who had died on the mountainside. He died climbing. For the Christian, life is an ever upward and onward way of life. 
the defense of these people was when they asked that question. We ate and drank in your presence and you talked in our streets. There are those who think that just because they are members of a Christian civilization, all is well. They differentiate them between themselves and the heathens and their ignorance and their blindness. But the person who lives in a Christian civilization is not necessarily a Christian. They may be enjoying all the benefits. They certainly are living on the Christian capital which others before them have built up. But that is no reason for sitting back content that all is well. Rather, it should challenge us. What did you do to initiate all of this? What have you done to preserve and develop it? We cannot and must not live on the borrowed goodness of other people. There will be surprises in the kingdom of God. Those who were very prominent in the world may have to be very humble in the next. Those whom no one notices here may be like the royalty of the world to come. There's an old story, I'm sure you've all heard it, but I'll share it again. There was an old woman who had been used to every luxury and all the respect of the world. She died. When she arrived in heaven, an angel was sent to take her to her new house. They passed through town, seeing some lovely and grand mansions. The woman thought to herself that each one she passed must be hers. When they had passed through the main streets, they came to the outskirts of the city, where the houses were much smaller. And on the very fringe, they came to a house which was little more than a hut. That is your house, said the angel. What? said the woman. That, I cannot live in that. I'm sorry, said the angel. But that is all we can build for you with the material you sent up to us. The standards of heaven are not the standards of earth. Earth's first will often be last, and its last will often be first. Just because you have reached that moment in life that you can profess yourself to be a Christian, to be a true believer, that does not end your journey. That is when the journey should actually begin. If all you have done is sit, eat, drink, and listen in the presence of Jesus, it does not mean that the door will be opened suddenly for you, as Jesus tells us in the Gospel. This journey must be a constant nurture. <coughs> Your journey as a Christian should be treated as a relationship that you value and honor with your very life. A dinner and a conversation is not enough to sustain a strong, healthy, and vibrant relationship. You must work at that relationship, giving it all of you, giving it all you have, giving your best to build that relationship. Have you ever thought about it? If you only spoke to your spouse or your best friend once every five years, you really wouldn't have much of a relationship, would you? You know, people look at Roy and I and think, y'all have one car, you're always together. But you know, that doesn't mean we always speak. So even the facade or the imagery of having that relationship may not be a strong relationship. So give it your all. 
If you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, then give the same energy and emotion and love and de dedication that you would give to a friend. If you want to celebrate life with Jesus Christ, do it as your wedding anniversary. You know, I've been told that Norma and Debbie still have the unity candle from their original ceremony. And that they travel out on their anniversary. Is that true? Or did I get lied to? Okay, I was just making sure that you wasn't lying. <laughs> It's to remember. It's to reignite that flame. To let that light shine once again. To take the time out of your day and out of your year to say, Hey, Jesus. Thanks, God. It's been a fun run. Sometimes, Jesus, you just wear not butt out. Sometimes I don't understand what you're throwing at me. That's how you build a relationship. You learn to talk to Jesus, your friend, after you've embraced Jesus, your friend, your Savior. When you fall in love, you get all giddy, get all excited. When you fall in lust, you get all giddy, get all excited. I had to throw that in for a certain member here. It doesn't matter. You gotta keep the embers burning. That's the relationship with Jesus Christ. It is true. We cannot live by the grace and goodness of others that have come and gone before us. We must live by the grace and goodness of ourselves and our relationship with our Jesus. Ask yourself each day, are you willing to knock at that door one more time and find for yourself what goodness and mercies you have sent up to build that mansion for you in the heavens? There's an old saying for salespeople. You steer a lot for vacuum cleaner salesmen. Knocked on that door, that was one no. That's one less no I have to put up with again. Keep knocking. Keep striving. The door may be narrow. Somebody posted a posting the other day. If one door closes, another door opens. Immediately following that was. Sometimes, when one door closes, open it again. That's the way doors work. <laughs> they open and they close. Have the courage and the strength to knock and then enter. And fear not what you're going to find, for you know that what you have sent up is building for you a bright, beautiful mansion over the hilltop. Amen. Amen.